Hello there, I am Timur Marv. I will be a teacher during this semester autumn 2020 for the course of Introduction to IT for Business. I have degrees from three universities. My undergraduate degree in computer science was from Northern Arizona University, where I have spent three years from 1998 to 2001. My master's degree in management information systems was received in 2003 from Tashkent University of Information Technology. In 2006, I was admitted to King's College London to the PhD program in computer science. My PhD thesis was on using a model-driven approach to formalizing requirements in the field of software engineering. The PhD degree in computer science from King's College London I finally earned in 2010. Today, King's College London is a leading UK and global university, which is number 33 in the world according to QS World University Rankings 2020. My professional experience is connected to academic institutions. For almost 14 years, I was affiliated with Kazakh British Technical University as a professor, and I also had administrative positions of an associate dean, dean and vice rector for academic affairs. I'm also an expert, a program evaluator of EBIT Accreditation Agency based in the United States of America. Last year, I was on the accreditation visit in Anchorage, Alaska, where we accredited a computer science degree program at University of Alaska Anchorage. I am super excited to spend this first term at British Management University with you and want to wish you an immensely productive, inspiring and enthralling semester. I will be extremely happy to see you all in class. Dear students, welcome to the course Introduction to IT for Business. This course is designed for business major students at BMU in Tashkent. In this course, we will learn basic concepts of information technology and how they can be applied to boost productivity in business. We will develop proficiency in utilizing basic computer tools and applications which are meant to help increase your personal and business efficiency. You will be given a practical exposure to these tools and applications. In the syllabus, you can find the list of topics arranged by weeks. Upon mastering these topics, you will be able to use general features of Windows-based applications that are commonly used in businesses such as Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft PowerPoint, and have general understanding of website design and cloud-based collaborations for effective teamwork. Lectures and tutorials are interspersed with materials and examples illustrating applications in various settings. The main learning outcomes of this course that you will be expected to take away are also described in the syllabus. Introduction to a computer. In order to properly use a computer or a computer device, it is necessary to have a basic understanding of what a simple computer is and how it operates. All computers have two things in common, hardware and software. Hardware is what computer is physically made up of, which includes the monitor, keyboard and mouse, and all of its internal components which allows it to store, receive and process information and data uh, are the central processing unit CPU or a processor, contains logic circuitry and performs the instructions of a computer's programs. It is the brain of the computer. Read-only memory, as we call it ROM, is the memory that comes with your computer that is pre-written to hold the instructions for booting up the computer. Information can be read from ROM, but not written back to it. ROM will retain data when the computer is powered off. It is known as non-volatile memory. Random access memory, RAM, is the memory available for the operating system programs and processes to use when the computer is running. RAM can be read from and written to for processing information and instructions. Data in RAM is not permanently written and therefore known as volatile memory. When you power off your computer, the data stored in RAM is deleted. Software is made up of the informational data and code that acts as a set of instructions informing the hardware what actions it is to perform or initiate. For example, software applications, the computer's operating system, Microsoft Word, which is word processing, Excel, spreadsheets and data calculation, web browsers, Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, and Apple Safari search engines like Google, Bing, and Yahoo. 
there are several different kinds of computers. The most common computers are desktop computers, laptop computers, tablet or touchscreen computers, and servers, which allow computers to network and connect with each other via the local area network or the internet. Other examples of computers may also include smartphones, gaming consoles, kiosks, and computers that may also be found in home appliances, such as TVs, refrigerators, and vehicles, which make use of software applications or apps to connect and communicate with internet service. Importance of computer literacy. So what is computer literacy? There are several definitions. Computer literacy is the level of expertise and familiarity someone has with computers. Computer literacy generally refers to the ability to use applications rather than to program. Computer literacy is the knowledge and understanding computer concepts, limitations, and ability to use computers and technology effectively. So another definition is that computer literacy can also refer to the comfort level someone has with using computer programs and other applications that are associated with computers. The precise definition of computer literacy can vary from group to group. Generally, literate in the realm of books connotes one who can read any arbitrary book in their native language or languages, looking up new words as they are exposed to them. Likewise, an experienced computer professional may consider the ability to self-tech, uh, which, which means to learn arbitrary new programs or tasks as they are encountered, to be central to computer leaders. In common discourse, however, computer literacy often connotes little more than the ability to use several very specific applications, usually Microsoft Word, Internet Explorer, and so on, for certain very well-defined simple tasks, largely by rote. Being literate and functional are generally taken to mean the same thing. The pervasiveness of computers continues to grow at an outstanding rate. Computers always change. They become faster, smaller, and more powerful. These changes have motivated the modern society to become comfortable with basic computer-related skills. Computer literacy is considered to be a very important skill to possess. Employers want their workers to have basic computer skills because their company uh, becomes even more dependent on computers. Many companies try to use computers to help run their company faster and cheaper. Categories of computers. Personal computer, a small computer designed for use by an individual. Workstation though, a high performance single user computer with sophisticated input and output devices that can be easily networked with other workstation computers. Mid-size mainframe is a middle level computer built to perform complex computation while dealing efficiently with the high level input output from users via terminal. Mainframe is a high level computer designed for the most intensive computational tasks. And last but not least, supercomputer, a large, extremely fast and expensive computer used for complex or sophisticated calculation. So now let's talk about the components of a computer. The five classic components of a computer are briefly described in what follows. The operation of the processor is best understood in terms of these components. A computer system consists of both hardware and information stored on hardware. Information stored on computer hardware is often called software. The hardware components of a computer system are the electronic and mechanical parts. The software components of a computer system are the data and the computer programs. The major hardware components of a computer system are processor, which is CPU, main memory, secondary memory, input devices, and output devices. For a typical desktop computer, the processor, main memory, secondary memory, power supply, and supporting hardware are housed in a metal case. Many of the components are connected to the main circuit board of the computer, called the motherboard. 
the power supply supplies power for most of the components. Various input devices such as keyboard and output devices such as monitor are attached through connectors at the rear of the case. The terms input and output say if data flow into or out of the computer. The picture shows the major hardware components of a computer system. The arrows show the direction of data flow. A bus is a group of wires on the main circuit board of the computer. It is a pathway for data flowing between components. Most devices are connected to the bus through a controller, which coordinates the activities of the device with the bus. The processor is an electronic device about one inch square, which is about 650 millimeters squared, covered in plastic. Inside the square is an even smaller square uh, of silicon containing billions of tiny electronic parts. A processor may contain 100 billion transistors. It does the fundamental computing within the system and directly or indirectly controls all other components. The processor is sometimes called the central processing unit or CPU. Memory. The processor performs all the fundamental computations of the computer system. Other components contribute to the computation by doing such things as storing data or moving data into and out of the processor. But the processor is where the fundamental action takes place. A processor chip has relatively little memory. It has only enough memory to hold a few instructions of a program and the data they process. Complete programs and data sets are held in memory external to the processor. This memory is of two fundamental types, main memory and secondary memory. Main memory is sometimes called volatile because it loses its information when power is removed. Secondary memory is usually non-volatile because it retains in its information when power is removed. However, it needs power when information is stored into or retrieved from it. Uh, so main characteristics of the main memory are closely connected to the processor, stored data are quickly and easily changed, holds the programs and data that, are processor, that the processor is actively working with, interacts with the processor millions of times per second, and needs constant electric power to keep its information. The main characteristics of secondary memory are the following. The secondary memory is connected to main memory through the bus and the controller, storably changed by, but changes are slow compared to main memory, used for long-term storage of programs and data, before data and program can be used, they must be copied from secondary memory into main memory. And uh, the secondary memory does not need electric power to keep its information. Main memory. Main memory is where programs and data are kept when the processor is actively using them. When programs and data become active, they're copied from secondary memory into main memory where the processor can interact with them. A copy remains in secondary memory. Main memory is intimately connected to the processor, so moving instructions and data into and out of the processor is very fast. Main memory is sometimes called RAM. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. Random means that the memory cells can be accessed in any order. When people say that the computer has 512 megabytes of RAM, they're talking about how big its main memory is. One megabyte of memory is enough to hold approximately 1 million, 10 to the power of 6 characters of a word processing document. Nothing permanent is kept in main memory. Sometimes data are placed in main memory for just a few seconds, only as long as they are needed. Secondary memory. Secondary memory is where programs and data are kept on a long-term basis. Common secondary storage devices are the hard disk and optical disk. So the hard disk has enormous storage capacity compared to main memory. The hard disk is usually contained inside the case of a computer. 
The hard disk is used for long-term storage of programs and data. Data and programs on the hard disk are organized into files. A file is a section of the disk that has a name. A hard disk might have a storage capacity of 500 gigabytes, room for about 500 to the 10, multiplied by 10 to the power of 9 characters. This is about 10, 100 times the capacity of main memory. A hard disk is slow compared to main memory. If the disk were the only types of memory, the computer system would slow down to a crawl. The reason for having two types of storage is this difference in speed and capacity. Large blocks of data are copied from disk into main memory. The operation is slow, but lots of data is copied. Then the processor can quickly read and write small sections of that data in main memory. When it is done, a large block of data is written to disk. Oftentimes, while the processor is computing with, the with one block of data in main memory, the next block of data from disk is read into another section of main memory and made ready for the processor. One of the jobs of an operating system is to manage main storage and disks this way. So the differences between primary memory and secondary memory are in front of you. You can read it from the slide yourself. Input and output devices. Input and output devices allow the computer system to interact with the outside world by moving data into and out of the system. An input device is used to bring data into the system. Some input devices are keyboard, mouse, microphone, barcode reader, graphics tablet. An output device is used to send data out of the system. Some output devices are monitor, printer, speaker. A network interface acts as both input and output. Data flows from the network into the computer and out of the computer into the network. Input and output devices are usually called I.O. devices. They are directly connected to an electronic module attached to the motherboard called a device controller. For example, the speakers of a multimedia computer system are directly connected to a device control controller called an audio card, which in turn is plugged into a bus on the motherboard. Sometimes secondary memory devices like the hard disk are called I.O. devices because they move data in and out of the main memory. What counts as an I.O. device depends on context to a user an I.O. device is something outside of the computer case. To a programmer, anything outside of the processor and main memory is an I.O. device. To an engineer working on the design of a processor, everything outside of the processor is an I.O. device. Software. That's a big topic. So computer software consists of both programs and data. Programs consist of instructions for the processor. Data can be any information that a program needs. Character data, numerical data, image data, audio data, and countless other types. The, the distinction between program and data is not as clear cut as you might think, however. Fundamental idea of both programs and data are saved in computer memory in the same way. The electronics of computer memory both main memory and secondary memory make no distinction between programs and data. The insight that both programs and data can be saved using the same electronic methods is an important concept in computer science. Computer systems use memory for either programs or data as needed. Types of programs. There are two categories of programs, application programs usually called just applications, are programs that people use to get their work done. Computers exist because people want to run these programs. System programs keep the hardware and software running together smoothly. The difference between application program and system program is fuzzy. Oftentimes, it is more a matter of marketing than, than of logic. The most important systems program is the operating system. 
The operating system is always present when a computer is running. It coordinates the operation of the other hardware and software com uh, components of the computer system. The operating system is responsible for starting up an application programs, running them, and managing the resources that they need. When an application program is running, the operating system manages the details of the hardware for it. For example, when you type characters on the keyboard, the operating system determines which application program they're intended for and does the work for, of getting them there. Some embedded systems do not use an operating system, but run their programs directly on the processor. Modern operating systems for desktop computers come with the user interface that enables users to easily interact with application programs and with the operating system itself by using windows, buttons, menus, icons, the mouse, and the keyboard. For example, the operating systems are Unix, Linux, Windows, System 10, and so on. So what kind of application programs do we know? These are word processors, game programs, spreadsheets, database systems, graphics programs, web browsers. And the system programs are operating systems, networking systems, programming languages, language software, website server, data backup. Operating systems. An operating system is a complex program that keeps the hardware and software components of a computer system coordinated and functioning. It is like the owner of a small shop who keeps everything in order by attending to customers, accepting deliveries, stocking the shelves, doing the bookkeeping, and so on. The shopkeeper must promptly attend to, task as, to tasks as they arise. Without the shopkeeper, the shop could not function. Most computer systems uh, can potentially run any of several operating systems. For example, most Intel-based computers can run either Linux or Windows operating systems. Usually only one operating system is installed on, on a computer system, although some computers have several. In any case, only one operating system at a time can be in control of the computer itself. The computer user makes a choice when the computer is turned on and uh, that operating system remains in control until the computer is turned off. Thank you for your attention. We will have our Q&A session during our lessons. Please check your timetable. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, please feel free to email them to me. Thank you very much. Bye for now.